Hey guys, so if you're not familiar with infusible ink, infusible ink is the sort of cricket name for sublimation ink. What is sublimation ink? Well, sublimation ink is ink that you can uh, use with a heat press and it's basically like an ink that turns into a gas under heat and it gets infused into the fibers of the material that you're pressing it onto. It's sublimated into the surface of the blank that you're using, whether that be like a mug or a t-shirt, you name it. So one thing to know about that is that you do have to, it has to be like a polyester based blank. So you can't sublimate on cotton, for example. You could sublimate on like things that are like 80% polyester, 20% cotton, you know, you can do that, but you're definitely the best, the best blank to do it on would be 100% polyester. And so today what I was going to do is use these coasters that have like a, a plasticky um, coating on them, which is what allows them to take the sublimation ink. Um, I've got four of them, so I will have, but we'll do one with the Brother Scan and Cut today. So even though Cricut, the infusible ink is specific to Cricut, there are other companies that make these kinds of markers now too. Um, like we are memory keepers. These are, it's called the transfer quill. Um, those are sublimation inks. Art Esprit has a line too, although I have not used them. And brother so i mean you can if you can fit the pens into your machine no matter what kind of machine it is you can use them so brother they do not fit none of these fit into the regular just standard universal uh, pen holder in the scan and cut but some of them fit into well wait not the okay so the standard pen holder for for the scan and cut they don't fit in that, but this is the universal pen holder. So it's sort of like the pen adapter and they will fit in these. So, well, some of them will. Now these thicker ones do not fit. The joy markers definitely fit. <laughs> I have used these with the scan and cut in the past. They work great. Um, you know, these, the We Are Memory Keepers should fit. They're pretty skinny and then the regular uh, Cricut infusible ink marker sets these would fit too. So really the only ones that don't are the are these thicker thicker ones So it's too bad because they're kind of cool, but you can use these to color So and the fun thing about the markers and how I'm going to use them today is that you can use Say like a black to outline the design you want and then you can color it in with whatever colors you like and then you transfer it to the surface and that's where you get a lot of really fun color. All right, I've opened Brother Canvas Workspace, which is the software for the Scan and Cut, and I have this file open. It is a Scan and Cut format called that I call it's it's a file I designed. It's I'm calling it the Four Seasons Circles because I'm going to put these on some coasters. You could also potentially like turn them into t-shirts or who knows, you know, whatever you wanted to do with them. They are currently sized at, the circles are sized at three and a half inches because that is this uh, roughly the size of those coaster blanks. So your screen's going to open kind of like this. You can, and I have zoomed in a little bit up here, but let's go over to the layers panel so you can see how these are grouped together. All right, so if you see over here, they are grouped and you notice that this is the winter coaster. This is the summer coaster. This is the spring and this one's the fall. So for our purposes today, I'm gonna to drag the three off of the mat that we don't need. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so we can look more closely at this because we're gonna do the spring one today with, our, with the scan and cut. 
All right, so if I scroll down here, this is the group that we are in. I'm gonna turn off the outside circle. The outside circle is really only there to function as like a placeholder, basically, to show like the size of the coaster. And because it is a pretty solid border, I don't really want that to show up on the coaster. So I'm gonna take that off. So we're left with these elements. So I've got these flowers on the hillside, the little tiny butterfly, the tree itself, the hill, the flowers in the tree, and then that circle. Each of these layers is set to cut. You can tell by the little knife blade. It also, when I roll over it, cut shows up. We need to change those to draw. And you have to do this with, um, with the scan and cut, you, anything you wanna draw, you have to change to draw like this in Canvas Workspace. If you don't do that ahead of time, when you send it to your machine, the machine won't give you the option to draw it, or at least it won't let you select it. It's weird. I don't really like that about this. I don't understand why that is, but it is what it is. Okay, so before I send this to my machine, I have to turn off I have to hide the other groups. Let me zoom out here so you can see. If I don't hide this, like these, I've already hidden these two. If I don't hide these, the computer won't let me send the file to the, the machine because these are outside of the red printable like border here. And I find that annoying, but <laughs> but for whatever reason, that's how Brother works. So you have to hide the elements that are outside of, of this, of the mat, basically. So I'm going to turn off the eyeball on the groups for those other three designs. And so then we just have the little spring tree showing here, and we've and I've hidden the circle on that as well. So we're over, so it's this group we're on. Okay, so now I'm going to go over here to the upper left and go File, Export, Slash Transfer, FCM File. It's going to give me this warning that objects that have been set as hidden are not available to export or transfer. That is perfectly fine. That's what we want. It also says tiny objects are automatically removed when converting to FCM because they are too small to cut. We'll see what happens because there are some pretty small elements on this, so I'm going to hit OK and I am going to transfer via the internet wirelessly. The export FCM file with the file folder means you could put it on a thumb drive and then go plug it into your machine. This is wireless. This guy would be if you have your computer hooked up to the scan and cut via a USB cable. So I'm gonna click that one. It says the registered machine is ready to download the transferred file from the internet. We will say okay and then head on over to the machine. Okay, so let's talk about these pens going into this pen adapter. So up here at the top, it has this little ring and this ring turns and then it has these little teeth. Hopefully you can see that, the little gray teeth that then fit into those white teeth so that so it gets smaller the the more you turn it so kind of the home base will be here and then uh, you you tighten it as you go the we are memory keepers pens do fit so that would work like we would basically you fit the the pen into here. So the pen holder. Yeah. The pen holder goes like so into this little then you push the, the pen down. And on, if you were doing a thicker material, you would want to put that material in in here so that you get the proper distance between the pen and the material, but we're using just regular copy paper, so that's super thin. And then you would like pull on this and then you, you turn it 
until it kind of until it sets until you get the teeth um, hooked in there and then you can use like this pen. We're going to use the 0 .4 or 0 .04 Cricut Joy black pen today because that is the thinnest pen I've ever, the smallest nib I've got, the most detailed pen I've got. Alright, so this is my Scan and Cut DX and I'm going to unload the regular blade. Just pull, like pull this up and pull the blade out. And then you put the pen in with the Brother logo facing forward. Now for the mat, you are going to need a low tack adhesive mat because what we're doing is we're using copy paper, you know, really thin copy paper to draw this design on. That's all you need. You don't need anything fancy or anything special. You don't need special paper. It's all good. So I'm going to put this in the upper left since I know that's where our design was. And I'm going to load my mat. All right, so remember I sent the, the design via the internet, so I'm going to hit retrieve data. I'm going to pick the wireless because that's how I did it. Now this would be what you would use if you did the, you know, the file folder. This would be what you use if you have a USB cable attached. And then this is what you would use if you're using a design that's already on the machine, either saved or in the internal um, gallery, I guess. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to hit this. Okay, so it's small, but the tree is there. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to hit OK. Please select. I want to draw. And because we set draw before I send it over here, it lets me do this. Now, I'm going to do a test just to make sure that I have my um, marker in correctly. So it puts the test mark, you can't really see it, there you go, this little red box all the way down in the lower corner. I don't have paper that far down, so I'm going to like bump it up a little bit, if I can. Okay, so now I know it's going to be on the paper, because I've got an 11 inch paper in here, and I will hit start. Okay, so the, the test draw is here, so it looks good to go, so I'm going to hit start on the screen, and it is going to draw the design. Now it's going to take a while, it says 20 minutes, that'll probably shorten down a little bit, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so it's finished, we're going to unload the mat. And that's what we got. It's a little bit bumpy, um, like you can see sort of up here. It's a little bit, I don't know, stubbly, I guess. <laughs> and that's because when the scan and cut is trying to fill in certain sections, it does it by just like dotting. So you get these sort of little, I don't know, dot marks on the edges. You don't get like a smooth line. Sometimes you do, but then sometimes you don't. So um, that is something to be aware of with the scan and cut drawing this design. All right, now I'm going to color this in and I'm going to probably try to clean up some of these lines with the little joy pen, the black joy pen just so that it doesn't show up that that bumpy on the coasters, but it may not really make that big a difference.
Okay, so I did exaggerate out the antenna and the body on the on the butterfly. And then I did this kind of hopefully you can see it. Sort of pointillistic shading on the branches to try to blend the three colors. We'll see how that turns out. Alright, but this is what I got. So you can see how it's pretty dull right now. Um, but once I heat it up and, and get it onto the coaster, uh, we'll see how it goes. And so I'm going to cut this out and we're going to put it on the coaster and see what happens. Okay, so here's the coaster and then here is the design. So I wanted to show you that what I did was I cut it into a circle and then I've kind of lined it up with the coaster basically like kind of right along right along that bottom edge of the grass there so that the black line is right on the edge of the coaster and then I have cut the circle so that it'll fold um, correctly you know it'll fold easily around and, and be flat so I'm going to use this heat resistant tape to tape it in place. And I would say that's pretty important. So this is this Cricut. Um, we Are Memory Keepers has a brand and then there's also, you know, other brands that are available on Amazon. So you don't have to get the Cricut. This just came with my Easy Press when I purchased it. Um, so I'm going to tape around this to keep it in place and then we will heat it up and see how our project turns out. All right, I'm gonna do this. So here's our design. I have taped it down. May have gone a little bit overboard on the tape, <laughs> but it's important that the design stays really flat. Um, so I'm gonna turn this upside down. Now this is my Easy Press mat. I have a towel underneath it. You don't necessarily need the towel, but I've got both. Then I have a couple pieces of cardstock underneath that, totally clean, totally white. This I only have a large Easy Press, so that's what we're doing this with. The Cricut settings are on the Easy Press 2 is 400 degrees for 240 seconds. So I'm ready to go with that. I'm going to put a piece of parchment paper down over the top. And it's really important that I don't move it once it starts getting hot. So I'm going to place it down, hit the green button, and just let it go. It said no pressure, so I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to leave it, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, it's about to finish up here, so I'm going to, um, as soon as it, the timer goes off, lift it straight up. Place it over here. I'm going to remove the butcher paper. And you can see how, I don't know if you can tell how burned that is. And even the cardstock is really burned because it's really hot. So I'm going to turn this off. And now I have to let this cool completely before I touch it because it's really, really hot right now. So I'll come back when it has cooled completely. looks good. So now you know you can use infusible ink pens and markers with your brother's scan and cut machine. I hope that's opened up a few more possibilities for you. Thank you so, so much for watching. As always, supplies are linked in the video description and over on my blog. If you liked the video, I would really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do that as well. Here's another video you may be interested in, so please check that out. Thanks. Have a great day.